hi guys in this video i'll be showing you the gaming code that we'll be using to do the stock prediction and uh i'll start with the one that i created the first time i actually called it stock game and it was inspired by a different kind of gaming platform it's called uh, openai it was designed by elon musk and basically what they're doing they have some an environment to use it's called an environment which basically uh there is an open script an uh, open source python script that you can use uh pip install i believe or it's sudo up get once you install it in your system you can try and create your script that basically in this virtual environment kind of like uh tries to figure out how it needs to uh, behave and uh you just get it working and the cool thing about it is actually has visualization so to give you one example um it's called a cut pole let me show you right now so in this example what you're supposed to do is uh using a cut pole which is basically like a stick standing up so i won't actually open it i'm just showing you here oh, let me just open because Sure it's going to load quickly so basically it's a stick that's supposed to be on a hinge and you can pull the string either left and right basically trying to balance the po uh, the pole upright and as you can see here uh, to figure this out you actually need to design your script and i believe the one script that i found had the best uh, training accuracy was one that was using q learning that's what you can see here there's another article toward engineering which talks about q learning so you actually do go into this i'd recommend on trend uh working on a deep learning script that actually does this because the thing is this doesn't actually work like a normal machine learning script where you have your x and y's basically the truth of what you expect versus the output your system kind of just gets some data and there is no truth value except i believe more likely what you see in your eyes and um Q learning basically i'm not actually fully understood the core logic behind it but that's been proven by more than one researcher that i've seen to be working the best so this is in this isn't something that i'm actually going to be doing uh, right here i'm just going to highlight here so you can see what i'm talking about this blog towards data science it's a good website i've read a number of their blogs uh, blog articles and i know they know right they know what they are talking about and they're pretty good at this and uh yeah they're also hosted on medium so if you know medium it's a site where uh people write blog articles share them for free and uh it seems in this case they've actually left the whole blogging aspect of their website to medium they don't actually seem to have a blog articles on their own website not sure why they'll go without approach one reason i'm not too keen on using medium on a site like mine is uh it's a premium uh, feature so unless for example in this case where they've actually integrated it into their website if somebody uh, somebody tries to find your articles on medium they may, they likely will have to pay their five dollar monthly fee to view content so that way you may actually lose some other people why I may be interested in your content because they can't find your content until uh, next month because usually you're given about five reading articles per month. Anyway, enough about that. Just look at this animation here of before balancing and after balancing. If you're interested in this, I recommend you actually look into this website. It's really good. They know what they're talking about. So it's towards data science.com. And uh, just to go to their home page, as you can see, they do have a good now a good amount of content. And as you can tell, I've actually bookmarked it. Uh, usually, when I have a lot of free time, and I just usually go through my bookmarks, find a gem that I found a while back, and work on it. I'm also on Medium, but I'd recommend if you're interested in my content, just go to thecoder.com with a double R. That's thecoder.com, and then slash blog. All my articles I actually wrote on Medium, I have uh, moved them to the blog. And here you should be able to see all my content I have listed here. 
for some reason it's telling me the server IP could not be reached. Uh, I think this is just an internet issue on my end because the internet that I'm using right now is not that, uh, that good because it's actually uh, using the mobile internet. Yeah, now as you can see it's actually loaded completely. So this is my website. I have a blog gallery about contact us. If you're interested in looking for someone to develop a website for you, software about uh, when I test or software, doing a little bit of data science, provided it's not too hardcore. If I have the skill, I'd be happy to work with you, but if it's beyond my scope, I'll come up front and tell you what I believe I can and cannot do and the quality of the work that I will not give you. Okay, with this done, let's get back to the code that I actually was working on. So this code was inspired by that example and uh, it was supposed to basically mimic the stock logic of you start trading on day one or the day that you specify and then move on up to the day of the end and every single day based on the amount which you started to invest as in this case you can tell the starting amount is a uh, thousand which is supposed to be a thousand dollars and you have your user key which is set this is a class so basically every time you initial, uh, initialize this you basically get a new key through the initialization process df uh, is supposed to point to the data frame that you're using activities the activity I believe you're supposed to have done and action space is just basically uh, the amount of money that you can actually spend basically getting from the same figure which is several amount so with that one you have an action space that will tell you how much you can spend and the more actually you do make uh, from as time goes by and the, the data is calculated the price the more you have to spend and if the price actually drops you get a loss value so this is available in my github code if you're interested you can look at the implementation of this i'm actually not going to go too deep into it because okay let me just try and just quickly peruse through it because uh this other one game it's much longer and it's the one that actually works so i don't want to waste too much time going over something that you may actually not be interested in using or editing so def, uh, define up uh Define update action, supposed to update that action space sample, uh, randomly samples uh, the value based on action space. So it's supposed to actually, for example, in this case, say spend 500 shillings, spend 100 calls. It's just a random number from zero to the number that you have in the amount. Uh, make here seems to actually be loading the data frame. Uh, if the data frame can't actually be found, it prints invalid input. Then stock game is supposed to start the stop uh, the game. Basically, first it checks whether the data frame exists. If it doesn't exist, it, it doesn't move forward. It just returns none. If it does exist, move on to the next line. Checking the start date, which is supposed to be given here as a value uh, of the stock game. And if the stock name, stock, the start date is none. Uh, there's another additional inside which actually checks whether none is still that. So this feels like it's a redundant part of the code. Maybe more likely because I just ditched it and uh, went for something more uh, realistic. In my case, because I believe I tried to re-engineer this, rework what was a good example in one example to this. And that became a more com uh, complex process, so I decided let me just start from scratch think about what i want my code to do and billy to do that so if we're just going to peruse to the end this is just the main thing that's supposed to have done allow you every single day to uh, get day info self amount activity profit and loss and every in between here it's supposed to increment the day so that every day after every time you do a an action whether you actually you decide to buy or sell or not do anything the next time you query you get the next date like uh, there is a list feature in a feature in Python which does this can't remember the name of it but basically it's a way of you make basically a, I believe it's 
I can't remember how it's defined, but when you define it, instead of um, it's like you have a list and then you do dot next, and you do dot next, it gives you the next value in the list that you're doing. I think it's called list comprehensions or something. Uh, anyway, so now we are now on the main code that actually we'll be using for this. And uh, at the top, you just have the basic imports, import sys, pandas, data frame is blank, matplotlib because we'll be plotting, import style and change it to ggplot, which is a more prettier version of the plotting that uh, matplotlib comes with. And uh, from sklearn, import joblib and then use that to load the Bitcoin predictor class. Then from there we have main key and game record. These are values are actually going to be updated with the code running below. And here you have the predictions. So predictions are supposed to be the equivalent of um, the values that you actually got there. Were, as you can remember, there was this prediction field in the data frame that you're working with, which went from two to negative two. And here I've just tried to a bit I'll call this to something. I'm not sure actually if I may even use it eventually in the future because as you can tell here, loss, profit, and draw all have the same value. So I believe my gut feeling is I'm actually not going to be using the code below doesn't use it anywhere because querying this as a dictionary basically be giving you the same value regardless. So it makes no sense that this code will actually give you anything useful. What is useful is this data frames, which is the key is the name of the data frame and the value is the path of the data frame. This is useful for one reason. You can tell here def, uh, which is a function to for choose, desa, choose data frame. Uh, at the beginning, it will tell you print available options, which is going to just show you all the available data frames by querying the data frame keys. And while wait is true, it will just keep this loop up and running. It won't let you leave until you've chosen a data frame. Unless you actually don't want to do this and then you just give it N here in the caps or small caps, then the program will cease to run and return none. So in this case, you may be using Python 2 or 3. I just wanted to make it a little bit uh, friendly in this case. I can't promise you that the whole code will run in Python 2. This was just uh, something I wanted to see whether, because I, I believe in some point I was using a machine that had Python 2 and this part actually did crash so I, I reworked it this way. So what it's doing here is sys, sys means a Python system and then I just check version dot starts with. So basically in this case maybe if I did sys dot version maybe I can do that in real time and show you what that looks like. So here I'll just do python dash dash version and you can tell here is 2.715 and um, if I, I'm not sure if I have a python here, let me just do a normal python and then I import sys and then I print sys.version I believe it's just basically going to give you the same value as you can tell it's just 2.7 something something. So this is a string what it returns. I do believe it's a string, so maybe I can check, check type, because what I did do is, uh, yes, it's a string. So I got part, back a string which tells me the, uh, the, version, the version name, default, I think the day that it was installed. Actually, yeah, it has to be the date that it, uh, Python was installed. Because this is Ubuntu, that's the day that I installed the operating system and uh, with that I can just do dot start with which is usually an extension that's available on all string string values and I check the first digit or the first figure in the string so if it's 3 that means this is a python 3 version if it's a 2 that means it's the python 2 version so using, using that I'm making sure the info handles uh, basically asks you for input depending on which version you are in. In Python 3, uh, you ask for input using this input and it will return it to you as a <coughs> text string. 
in python 2 you had raw string raw input when you wanted only text if you wanted numbers you just put input so they ditched raw input in python 3 uh, with the logic that if you are basically ask for something i believe and uh, it always comes as a string and you want to do a conversion into an int you just basically wrap it around an int and you're done the cool thing with this is now the input in this case if it was in python 2 and you put in let's say the letter a it would crash because that's not a valid number but using this method it can accept any type of input then you can do your own validation clause inside of it and it becomes much more easier to code and basically you can see like a if you wanted for example a number and you go back a string you can just do an elif uh, still keep it in a while loop then query the user telling them that your input was not a valid number type something like that so moving on you go to if info is in data frame keys so i'm checking whether the string that was provided is in the available keys here if it is load it into data frame print data frame set and then return here so at this point i'm going to be ejected from this function otherwise elif info equals to n or elif info equals to either these two types of n a small caps n or a capital letter n break and break basically just break this while loop and then it will return none this the reason that that makes sense is below this if you provided in, uh, something that's not a valid input uh, let's say you typed something like uh, agg which is not an, uh, one of the data frame names what it will happen is it will not be caught by this not this so else would print and it, the else loop will just print some <clears throat> user friendly message that tells you whatever you typed in which will be pasted inside here is not in the available options and uh, the available options is going to print them out again if you want to exit type n or n whether in caps or small case yeah, and yeah basically that's how you load the data from this <laughs> The next piece of code is now the stock game, which basically will be simulating a process of buying and selling stock as an actual user. This is meant to mimic the whole process of buying a stock as an actual user with only one small caveat, which is inside a player when I'm using this, my player code in, I believe, player two and three, the investor was doing multiple investment concurrently before they went to the end of the loop. I'll explain to that when I reach to that part, that's, but just, that's just a side note. This code works okay. My implementation lower on was a bit more clunky for the player and that's not too much of an issue because that player was not using the Bitcoin data frame. It was just basically supposed to use the, <coughs> the fields that I was creating to try and basically try and do its own uh, makeshift calculations on whether it should invest or not. So moving on to the next thing is here, some global variables, main game records, prediction and past predictions. And it looks here like these fields may be used. I'm betting they're not going to be used. Mm, basically, this is a code that I actually just uh, went, I ran some code, make sure it's not buggy, it's not crashing. I wrote it about over six months ago. I've not had a chance to look at it since then. So this is still like a, a refresher cost for me on how the code works. So what the first thing that's doing here is checking if user key is available. And user key is important on this note. This actually stores the moves that you're making, which allows me to plot them using matplotlib. And a user key is a unique way of identifying who the user is, because you can run this 10 times in a row and maybe you want to see how you did in the first time, second time, third time, fourth time, and fifth time. If your code was a little bit uh, erotic, well, erratic, I mean, <laughs> if your code was a little bit erratic, what you would have done is repeating the same thing over and over and over again will give you different results. But there's a ad cool additional feature here is where you can specify the start date, as you can see here. And you can specify some other things like the amount you want to invest which you do not actually do that it's your program that's doing that but it's something that you you can you can take into consideration maybe your code can 
basically your code can decide how much they want to invest and how much they want to withdraw and the amount that usually you start with by default is a thousand dollars you can set it to less even to let's say a hundred dollars and so on just to see whether your code can cut it at a small amount and so on and uh, if you can do all these small tweakings for all these uh, things that can create a little bit of divergence from one iteration versus the other depending on how the player does this and the player I mean actually the code that actually will play the game so there are two parts of the game of this code which is the game you can think of it as a like playing an actual game the gaming environment yeah for, ex for example think like you're playing gta the game is its own separate system and you are just a player who's playing it and you have your character and your character plays the game and it follows the set of rules that the environment states like for example if you fall down from a specific height you die in our case here if your amount goes below zero shillings game over and that includes the amount you've invested so you, you have the amount in total that you can have in your pocket which is the equivalent of the amount and the amount re remaining to invest so if both of them go to zero you basically done a poor job of being an investor the game comes to an end in the same case scenario if you wanted to see how this relates to this uh, the gta game you can create a little bit of a script that plays uh, gta for you let's say gta has an I believe it's called a developer toolkit that can allow you to maybe do modding like a, let's say mod the player to look like a dinosaur or something maybe i've seen some people do this uh for machine learning toolkits one of the things you can do is for example set your player to be infinite health basically they can die it sounds like a cheat but basically it's attributes of your player you can say your player attribute of able to die is false or true that's an example case scenario of this maybe your player's attribute of getting tired when they are running is not true so that's another thing maybe you want to set your player's attribute of speed maybe let's say in this case put it a number like 15 you crank it out you crank it up to about 500 or 5000 so the moment you press forward on your keyboard he moves the equivalent of flash so you've designed a uh well a uh, modified kind of a user not sure the name of what they actually call them just slipped through my head uh i think it's called modding it's no modding basically yeah uh, you, you developed you developed a new character for the game people can download it and then maybe you even style him like flash and he moves faster than any other person so that's an example of modding your player to be different than the custom player that exists that's why in this case i have player two three and other players that choose the bitcoin moving on with this um, as i'm showing you here is if you have results just let me uh okay it was actually up here so player name equals to player and the main key so player name dash main key so that's your name when the game starts and this is given to you if you haven't specified a user key if you specified a user key down below it will be checked whether the user key is valid so in this case most of the cases when i'm running this i don't specify user key i just let it increment in a sort of an open uh, dictionary that keeps all this data somewhere for me so i can access them in my jupyter notebook anytime that i want and see what's going on and the next thing here i'm looking at is the user key which is the same as the main key if you are curious what the main key is it's the same one here and so basically here at the beginning the player was given the main key as its key and then the user key is set to the main key and then the main key is incremented by one the reason i'm actually also storing the user key separately is because down below i actually do use it time to time and that is the same as i could have even done user key at the top here and then use user key here but it's preference and uh, it's, uh the code works for me so i'm pretty much okay with it this way but okay let me even just do it that way 
because it makes more sense when you do it this way. Actually, no. The player name is the main key. The user key will be the equivalent of the main key, and then the main key is, incre is incremented. So at this point, if I run this again, the main key will be moved up by one. So I'll just not waste my time right now because I'm trying just to explain to you how the code works, trying to fix that. But if you really, really want me to change that, I'll just push those changes and the next time you look at the github code they'll be updated so the next thing here i'm doing is i'm checking if the start date has been provided in this case it's not been provided so i'm doing uh, a check for them from inside the data frame i'm checking for the date is oh yeah here start date is not equals to none so you have specified a start date so here i'm checking whether the date is can be found inside of here so data frame inside of data frame check for the date column for a value that matches this start date inside there give me the index and turn it into a list now i've got my results this is either going to be something that's found or nothing that's been found if results basically whether this is an empty list or at least with something if results start index equals to results position one so the first thing you found and it's usually one thing show me that and set it to start index so i know i need to start otherwise i didn't find anything so the start index equals to zero which is just at the beginning of the data frame and then i print start date not found first date is the data frames date first date otherwise you didn't specify a start date start index equals to zero so the next thing i'm doing is if player name not in game records keys so the player name has not been found in this record keys and up there you remember that we actually try to we did create a player name here so i'm checking has this player name been found inside these keys uh, basically did someone actually use the same keys which would have happened if uh, for some reason main key did not increment properly and so print player id not found new record being created which is normal behavior game record player name this is just the data the core data of that player days without activity zero amount which is the amount thousand there last game zero game history an empty dictionary invested zero investment breakdown a dictionary of nothing just blank for now with a draw breakdown empty dictionary start index is the same as stack index current date current date invest and in, invest history it's a blank list and uh amount history it's a blank list and uh now you check the player records, game records, player name. So the player record is the player. Can okay, I give me a moment to compose myself and see where I was, I'm moving with this? So player record is a variable that I'm creating that's assigned all of this game record that I've created here. And as you can tell, the game record has been assigned as a key, the player name. So I'm querying it again here. I could have done something similarly here like this which i'm going to do because this is something you can't do in python uh, it's called a multiple assigning maybe that's not the technical name for it but to give you a full case scenario of this let me just go into here and just say let's say i want to say a equals to b equals to two so here a has been assigned to two and b has been assigned to two you can query them to as many things as you need as many fields as you want to i don't think there is a there is a limit on how many you can do 
so even if i do like for example e equals to two so in, in a certain case scenario maybe you want to more to define multiple variables and uh yeah the variables have the same content instead of doing them on different lines you can do them in a single line so now here i've defined my player record and my game record i believe it's going to look more use of more readable if i do it this way so this way player record equals to this and game record also equals to this the only thing i'm possibly wondering if they are mentioned as two different things uh which basically means if are, are they pointing as two different points in the memory so if basically when i edit this it's not going to be edited as this uh, just do a quick check up on this equals to b equals to an empty list so let's say a dot append one we check b yeah they all point into the same thing so that's a cool thing and this is the main thing that i wanted i wanted that when player record is edited the game record keeps a record of this if they were considered as two separate objects i have a chance of losing all that data that i was trying to uh, save right here so the next thing here is print all player id found data will be appended to it so in this case if player has been found player is just the same thing that was found the player is that player so the info equals to df.ilog0 and this is just think of it as a row for that information because ilog is just the location of a single row so it's just getting the index of the row by this is the index zero means the index of the row so i'm just getting from the data frame a single row and if you are just to imagine if this uh this is just what's in that row in that in this case the date the price so on so on so on the actual value hopefully you've watched the other video so you can understand what i'm saying so that would be the row that would be returned on the zeroth uh, zeroth position the next thing i'm just doing is incrementing the current date plus one so that the next time uh this is queried the player record can say which date you are on and then move on to the next thing and this can happen because current date is just an index which usually starts by zero or the index that you specified and the thing the cool thing here is when you're doing the indexing i'm not indexing it by the date i'm indexing it by the position of the index and that's why i went to the trouble up here of trying to find out the index and then getting back the index if you spe specified the start date so that way i can just increment it instead of with dates which would be more complicated of doing a date tomorrow then checking for the date that actually matches that and all that complicated process or just get the index check the next item on the index anyway with moving this in mind that part has finished you just went through a whole day you get back the what happened on the first day which is your user key the day info amount that you started with this is profit loss zero zero has the game come to an end no so you get back false um this elif clause is handled by this if user key equals to none so if you actually did specify a user that's why it's saying elif user key is not equals to none what happens is i generate the player name by this string which i use to create the player name which is player underscore then the user key and then i check whether i can find the player name in this game record keys if i find it if i find it player name in game record keys i say player has been found and will be appended to the information otherwise player has not been found and i create a new player with this information i'll do that same process of uh doing it as a one-liner save the whole process of 
having to redefine it below it again the next step that follows this is move on one day into the future so that's player record current date plus one current date equals player record current date so you found the current date that's today you know the current date i mean player record is the current date plus one so we moved one day into the future here i'm just getting back that current date which is tomorrow's date and uh we're using that date i'm checking whether this date is too far along in the future so if for example the current date is the index plus one it means when i try to query this i'll get back the index does not exist that this way i know you've reached the last row and that's why it prints reached the final day game ending i return the day info which will be uh well, you'd call it here like looking at yesterday's price, but it's not really because at the end of every day, we just increment one. So we are avoiding trying to look into tomorrow's future. We're just giving you today's future by just current date minus one. And uh, so previous days in for which is two days ago. Well, not yesterday's price. Two days if you consider that you also consider uh, starting from the point of tomorrow. Then previous day's info is current date minus two. And previous price is just uh, from this previous day info, the first column. And today's price is uh, today's info, the first column. Um, hopefully you also know the index and usually starts at zero. So the first column is usually date. The second one is now the price. And if player record invested, let me check on this and confirm mm -hmm. if player record invest so it's checking the investment column of the player record so basically if you've had some investment uh, it's going to calculate how much profit of loss you've gone uh, from uh, what's actually happened in the single day so new investment is round yeah, so basically what I do is take today's price times the amount that you invested divided by yes the yesterday's price divided by two. Uh, not divided by two, actually it's round it into two positions, two decimal values, which is currency wise, you usually just have cents in two decimal values. And uh, new invest is if the new investor has been calculated here greater than the amount you invested at the beginning of the day then you made a profit and the profit is you know, invest minus player uh, how much you started at the beginning of the day if it's not more it's less then you made a loss and then i just use the opposite which is just the beginning amount minus the, the amount at the end of the day then i know how much loss you went through using that i just uh take this player record last game plus one so that way i can know how many games you've played in this case and then return user key day info player record amount player record invested profit loss and true so in this case i'm not returning all the other nitty-gritty features of your investment history that gets stored into the game record and the game record is like a master record of every move you've ever made from the beginning all the games played ever so this is never really stored in a like a pico file or anything that can be continuously uh, reviewed later on reason being i didn't see the need to it's easy to do if you if you've actually seen me how to do to use pick uh, using pickle so it'll be just as simple as every end of this process uh you've opened a pickle file you load that data into a pickle file update the pickle file and you just keep doing that it's just be the equivalent of updating the data into a hard uh, as a non-volatile memory kind of storage so with that in mind the next step here is now checking the day info this feels like uh there's something here that oh yeah so if the date wasn't the last date this is what would have happened this would never this 
uh, if the date was this code here only runs if it's the last date if it's not it continues to run from there onwards and i can tell this video is going to be a little bit long so please bear with me we are about about a quarter way through and i'll try and uh skim through uh things which are not too important basically i'll i'll basically just uh try not to add too much information that's not too necessary right now when you're doing this so day info uh, similar to the way you just saw the previously just get the day forget the previous day info previous date today's price it's the same as the code that was above there player record investment this code is exactly the same as the one that was previously there same logic otherwise if the player actually never invested anything profit loss is zero zero mm, makes sense because that's a player maybe at that point they were looking at the stocks and they were like maybe just give me a couple of while to see what's going on let me see a trend as an example scenario maybe you have a kind of old age kind of investor code you've written who wants to see how the stock behaves the first week or so however you want to code it so internally it has some data because it's it doesn't have future vision the call that the way this scheme runs it just gets data from day one moving on incrementally so your code inside should have its own way of deciphering the data and more more importantly kind of keeping a record of what's going on if you want your data to be more smarter than a single day instance making moves okay and i've implemented a number of things down there so uh, you will see how that works so here if player record amount equals to zero and player record invested into zero so here you've just basically blown all your cash the amount that you had in the pocket at the beginning and the amount you invested both have actually gone to zero you have nothing so something went terribly wrong you're broke by and then last game plus one and then you return all the information so that they can maybe train their machine algorithm to be a little bit more smart around the next time around they want to play this so uh i may actually even make a code that actually runs this over and over and over again like that q learning scenario and then it gets more and more in tune of what's going on inside the code which is something i really wanted to do with this but I have a number of projects that are just coming to me back to back. So I've just been switching on them up based on how complex they are and how easy it is for me to do. And when I did this, it reached to a certain point where I was just happy with it to where it was. The next step was now learning more machine learning, getting more now down and nitty gritty on how it works. So when I would come back to it, my code wouldn't be just good enough but not good enough to actually be impressive or even work to the level that i'll actually want i prefer if I actually i'm going to do something i get it right the first or the second time or the tenth time around so with this in mind this is the invest amount equals to none withdraw amount equals to none so in this case you have never in um believe this means you have not yeah you've not tried to you're not trying to uh, basically withdraw or invest anything so withdraw amount is none invest amount is none and the player record days without activity is less than five so this code here is to prevent a user from staying too long without making any moves and the limit i've set is five days you can't stay five days without making a move if you want invest a single dollar that thing will uh, reset itself the next day you can pick back your dollar keep doing that invest a dollar pick back your dollar invest your dollar pick back your dollar even if you are <laughs> the value of your dollars it's changed based on maybe profit or loss but it's necessarily don't stay more than five days maybe five days is a little bit too low and uh, i can make this field more editable in terms of uh, the game's variables when you're initializing the game you give it a uh, that that field that basically can give you more room to breathe like let's say 30 days because this is data that's worth years so maybe staying a month without investing is logical instead of five days but anyway that's the core behind logic of it and player record invested 
uh, so this is just how much you've invested if it's zero amount and you've stayed five days you have not oh yeah so you don't really need to worry provided you have some amount invested even it's a single dollar and you never invest a single amount this code will not initiate so this one is supposed to boot out people who are not trying to do anything imagine in that scenario case where maybe you are queue learning code kind of things that the best move around to be on the safe side is never invest anything you are assured at the end of the day you will still have your one thousand dollars <laughs> yeah imagine yeah your q learning code goes the other opposite of the way it's supposed to be going so it actually just wants to keep its money make and that's the best way to make money so five days down the line without making an investment it just be kept booting out of the game so it will basically start learning the best move to be making is investing so that's not a given and then from then maybe we can now start picking up the best behavior of investing not saying the quick learning code will be the best option but if i was to put my money on it i'd say it would be one of the more better options with deep learning because there is a deep neural network kind of queue learning method but i'm divulging too much let me get back to what i was talking about here we'll be seeing more i'll be showing more of this as i learn hopefully soon enough um okay so player record last game plus one so just increment to the next date return that information of what happened today and uh player record amount history append player record amount so you've done something with your amount because at this point more point it proves that you have money and something has happened to your money so i want to know how your money has changed after this day so this list will be keeping track of your money how it fluctuates over time and this money actually mean the money that you have basically the equivalent of money you're willing to spend but you've not actually spent the 1000 that you started to begin with so that's the money that i'm tracking there's a different amount of money that's in the game you can consider it as coins that you've bought or shares in that scenario that's a different uh money that you have so if you invest amount basically if you wanted to invest some amount if player record uh, amount is greater than invest amount so you have more money to invest on the amount you wanted to invested from the amount withdraw the amount you want to invest then in the investment amount add the amount of money you want to invest then in this investment breakdown uh, using today's date taking the current buying price and the amount invested I keep a record of this which is monumentally important kind of data that can given to the right machine learning algorithm this data can be very useful in analysis of what's going on so this is why I built this token with the mentality that I want a fully uh, well how would I put it no curtains no no curtains are what's happening behind the back so the machine learning code may or may not be given access to this more likely may in a certain scenario where you've built your code in a sense so it's not supposed to be trying to mimic or memorize what's going on in the background but look for patterns i basically tell it these are the moves of how i've been making this is how basically they may be even diverging and maybe moving this way it's like avoiding an obstacle in that scenario avoiding mistakes that you're making based on certain things so on and so on so that's the mentality when you have the data it's better to have the data than not have it in the first place especially when it comes to data science there is no such thing as having too much data so next thinking is a uh, player record check the days without activity and now i set it to zero because you have done something you've invested some amount so that value that incremental key that you like i saw previously went to five gets reset to zero return that daily info otherwise you have zero to invest which means that you try to invest more money than you have in your uh, initial investment amount or the amount of investment amount that was left after after maybe multiple stages of investment so next thing here is a uh, withdraw amount so if I was trying to withdraw an amount, I need to check if I, in the amount that I've invested, I have 
that amount of money. If I do, the money goes back to the amount I'd say. I'm not sure if this is the correct. Uh, well, bank. Well, how would I put it? Tech, it's not technical. It's a economic term, but my money in your pocket. So withdrawal amount basically returns that money to the amount in your pocket, and then uh, the invested is withdrawing the amount that you actually withdrew. And then I have my withdrawal breakdown that keeps track using the current date, the amount that was drawn, and the amount of stock price at that particular day. So the, the player record then is also we are reset to zero, and then I return that day's information. Otherwise, return you have don't have enough money to invest as you actually wanted. So that's the whole stock game. Now I'm going to show you the player and uh, this player is the first one which is called player 2 and as I said before this is an unrealistic that has one unrealistic thing which is inside here as we go down you will see multiple investment cycles back to back that seem not to be carrying what happened previously to the other case so I can maybe have one that says if you had an amount that was this much do this if you the next the next that returns information then the other one doesn't care about the starting date it just cares based on the last one so in term of a symmetric analysis there is a little bit of i'd say jargonish kind of behavior but anyway in this case i just wanted to see how well it does and this one doesn't use the bitcoin predictor it was just my attempt of making my own pure code that trades and it's really useful because when you actually now want to make code that chooses the Bitcoin predictor, you don't just plug it in like a USB to a port. You need your code to get the data in the right format and do what needs to be done. And like in you know, an example of a Bitcoin predictor, the only thing it will tell you is whether it expects the price to go up or down. It will not tell you how much you should invest or how much you need to take down and basically won't tell you if things are going badly or goodly so if there's erratic moments you need that kind of a back sense feeling that things have been going badly for a while and uh this may be just be a small amount of sunshine before the clouds uh, recede again so don't go all in maybe just watch and see what's been going on so that kind of mentality is what i was putting into context here and seeing how well this does. So just to show you the amount of things that goes into player two, um, a number of these fields are the data that are actually going to be fed into the stock game, like start date. Uh, I'm not too sure about this sleep and sleep time. I believe maybe this was supposed to be just, yeah, sleep time was supposed to be. If I wanted to see the dates not run like if you run this code normally if you know how code usually runs pretty quickly you could run through the maybe two thousand three hundred rows in less than 10 seconds this is being optimistic maybe it will take about 15 seconds but maybe that level of speed you can actually not see what's going on and if you are the economic uh, economic kind of guy who knows numbers you may want it to move in a speed that you can understand so sleep time equals set to one means that it will run a single day wait a single second run the next day then the next second and run the next day and so on and so on so this way you can see how it moves slowly through time and basically start seeing like yeah i think that's a good move that's a good move that's a good move you blend it there, you blend it there. So that kind of scenario is why I actually implemented split. So plot falls basically is whether I actually want this to plot what it did relative to what data came from uh, the data frame. So I can see how well it did in totality, even though at the end of it, it usually gives you the profit in terms of a man number, but you can get that number in terms of a graphical analysis, which you can see maybe at a particular point, uh, let's say a year back ago, it was really high, then it went down. So you can, using that intuitively, say that you made a huge amount of loss, even though right now you have some profit, in reality, there was a continuous moment where it made 
uh, bad decisions in this case and continuously lost more and more money so in this case that's the kind of logic i would use to try and prevent less and less of those uh, decisions when the stock markets uh, basically I believe it's called crashing when the stock market crashes don't play with a broken toy so step out let things cool off let the engine start beating on all the cylinders see things are moving in the right direction when you get your confidence back uh, you put one foot in feel like uh, the foundation is solid put your next foot in maybe you're still holding on to the door just in case and you're pretty sure things are going on then you can now start um, basically trading more ferociously because usually if that stock market has uh, maybe external features that may make it make you to crash but it's a good company it may come back with a kick under the fire fire case scenario so things may actually shoot up rapidly so in this case if you time it well you may come in when things are about to go good and uh, you left before things went really bad so anyway pick uh this is player two and uh i'm actually just going to stop the video here and the next video i'm going to pick up how we the player two code works